What is up, everybody, and welcome back to episode 22 of our Pro Cyclist Mode with Vladimir Saracen, where today we will have a bunch of really fun races, starting off with La Flèche Wallonne, getting into Liège, Bastogne Liège, seeing a few stages of the Dauphiné, and ending with the Czech National Championships as we look for redemption. And we are going to start today with La Flèche Wallonne, the World Tour race, a 192.1 kilometer hill stage. And that little hill there at the end looks like it would be perfect for us as we take a look at the favorites. And it's ourselves and Quinn Simmons, Tade Pogacar as well. So as you can see, the field is pretty stacked. Remco only ninth favorite, but we're going to do everything we can to go ahead and take this one. And with 61k left, we will get our first look at the Murdehui, the final climb of this race, and one of the most fun climbs to watch in real life. So we're going to set our pace to 85 and see how our rider responds, because this is going to be pretty crucial to see how fast we can go at the end of the race. If we kick it up to 87, we can see that Gosens can keep up with us so we're gonna have to make sure this final climb is gonna be really fast and with 39k left to go Tade has made his move along with Magnus Sheffield so we're gonna look to close that down Vanderpool also trying to come around but it looks like we're gonna have enough to keep that in check for the time being as Tade can't open a significant gap, but Mate Mahorich already out of his red bar. That is not great news for us, as well as Zana completely cracked. So we're going to have to basically do this by ourselves for the end of the race. And with 30k to go up the Murdehui for the second to last time, uh, Tom Pidcock has decided to make a move, but we have pulled back Tade. Tom looking like he's in pretty rough shape, so we're just going to kind of sit back with this group and hope that Julian Alaphilippe can pull us back to Tom Pidcock. And here with 11k left we are in the group of favorites but that breakaway still over a minute ahead of us so we're gonna have to look to take the front right up this second to last hill as Alaphilippe, Gregoire, Vanderpool, everybody decides it's time to attack and we don't quite have enough yellow bar to make an attack but we're gonna have to anyway. This might spell the end of our race, but we have to stick with this group. We're not here to finish second place. We're going for the win, and hopefully we can recover a little bit on this downhill. But right now, Gregoire, Roglic, and Pidcock all just a little bit ahead of us. It looks like it's a 22-second gap up to Romain Gregoire. And with our current stamina, I don't think that's something we're going to be able to pull back. And with 2.7k to go... We are sitting behind Mathieu van der Poel, who looks like he's just about out of stamina, so we're going to set our own effort. We have a tiny bit of energy. Our energy gel is going to pop right about now, and we're going to start our sprint quite a bit later than everybody else, just because we are not in good shape. As you can see, everybody comes around. It looks like Tade versus Mathieu for the win. And I wish we could see up the road as we finally get a little glimpse. It's going to be Tade Pogacar to win La Flèche Wallon. No, Mathieu van der Poel comes across the line in first. Pips him at the line. Tade in second. Quinn Simmons in third. And the best we can do is going to be maybe a 13th. Yeah, a 13th place finish just ahead of Magnus Sheffield. So a pretty disappointing result, but... With the tiredness we have in our legs right now, we're probably going to have to wait until a rest week from training to get back into the uh, winning position. But we're going to have to put our disappointment to the side very quickly because up next is Liège, Bastogne Liège, a 254.3 kilometer hill stage that, honestly, with the tiredness in our legs, I think this might suit us more. I know we're not good at sprinting. But that little downhill before the finish, if we can pop, our acrobatic descent might be able to get us a big enough gap to stay away until the end. So we're going to be patient, not look to make any moves until that last, last little hill. 
and see if we can use that acrobatic descent to get us another monument victory. And at the start of the race, uh, we have been told to go ahead and get into a breakaway, so that's exactly what we're trying to do right now, as Jasper Stoyven also trying to get things going. But we'll see if uh, the peloton lets us break away at all. And here with 48k to go, Jasper Stoyven has made a move over that last, I'll call it a small mountain. Uh, but we are working on closing him down. He was 50 seconds up. It looks like we're slowly pulling him back. Damian Tuza is here with us. We're not going to use quite that much stamina just yet because we're still not looking like we're in a great place, but we still have three minutes over the peloton, so we're just going to set to relay, regain some stamina, and hope we can keep this gap until the end. And with 30k to go, Richard Carapaz, Tadej Pogacar have both joined the break, and they are looking to make some moves immediately as we can't really afford to respond to that. There's still so many big hills coming up, and I think maybe the tiredness has just gotten a little out of hand here towards the middle part of this season. And with 16k left, we are about 40 seconds back. We find ourselves in a group with Tade, Julian Alaphilippe, Mathieu van der Poel. We're trying to stick with it over this second to last climb, but we just can't and it looks like we are going to break just before the top of that final climb get over <laughs> and uh it's not going to be the uh monument win that we wanted but maybe a top 10 can still be on the cards here I, even that's looking very unlikely right now but Alaphilippe, Pidcock, Stian Fredheim all cracked next to me is just a testament to exactly how tough this stage is and here with 4k left, everybody in the front of the race has been caught as we're going to look to try and sneak through here. We do not have a ton of stamina left, but our energy gel has been popped. Looks like Primoz Roglic is in prime position right about now, but Tobias Holland Johannesson making a move as with about 1k, we're going to get to pop our sprint and see where we can finish with this group as it's going to be Primoz Roglic to take Liege, Baston Liege ahead of Tobias Holland Johannesson and Alex Vlasov coming in third as we do not get the top 10 we wanted but a top 20 is going to have to do as we come across the line in 17th place. But that is going to take us to stage one of the Dauphiné, a 159.9 kilometer medium mountain stage and if you take a look at our fitness, we have had a couple rest weeks in between. So we are not in top shape, so any kind of GC hopes or even fighting for a jersey seems pretty not doable. So we're just going to be hunting for stage wins. And it starts here as this looks like one that we can take advantage of. Coming down that final descent, we can pop our acrobatic descent and hopefully make it up and over that last hill in first place. And we are here with 24.5k left. We're coming up to the last ascent of this tiny mountain. It feels more like an elongated hill. It's not very steep. Looks pretty good for us. Zambanini is taking the win for us. La Guiesa is the name of this mountain hill type thing. And Quinn Simmons keeps attacking, but that break is still one minute ahead. And we have to catch up before the end of this climb if we want this stage win. As now it's Benoit Castillo and Jan Tratnik looking to make a move. Quinn Simmons also up here. Our stamina not in a great spot, but everybody else's has to be suffering at least a tiny bit as well. But unfortunately, we do not have the water bottle. Zana! Zana! Protect! Uh, Zambanini is out. So it's going to be Davide Piganzoli looking to make a move here. Hopefully he can just close this gap. We're going to have to slow down a little bit. There is a little flat section up here. Right before we want to make our move is Peo Bilbao, our teammate, 
goes in front of us. But now with the slight downhill, we're going to set it down to 48, get a little bit of that yellow bar back. And I don't think we're going to have enough to make a move at this little hill like we wanted to, but, you know, we can still maybe get an advantage on the downhill if we manage to stick with this group. But that's looking less and less likely. We have the tiniest sliver of a yellow bar, and Pale Bilbao is straight towards the front. If there's a move to be made, it's going to be made right now. And the favorites not looking like they're in a great position. We're going to have to move it up to 75 to at least try and stay with this group. But as you can see, we are just about done. If we move it up to 85, just as we crest the hill, that will just about do it. And we still have half a bar of red stamina left, which is not a ton. But it's enough to keep us in the game for the time being. Alexander Vlasov really trying to push the pace at the front on this downhill section. And we cannot let that move get away without us. So this has been a very eventful end of this stage. But I think when it's all said and done, I don't think this is going to be the one for us. As there's 6k left, we're going to go ahead and pop our energy gel. And we have recovered quite a bit of stamina. But the acrobatic descent isn't going to get us enough of a gap now, so we might look to make our move right here on this tiny little uptick. It's going to have to be a move. It's, we don't have enough stamina left. Our energy gel is popped, but we're going to go ahead and start our sprint way earlier than everybody else and hope we can just hold on. There's a K left. We're not going to be able to. It's going to be Mathieu van der Poel followed by Tom Pidcock and Pierre Latour. So it looked good there at the start, and then we just hit a brick wall with our stamina. I don't know if that's because of our fitness levels. There shouldn't be any tiredness, so really no excuses here on Stage 1. But that will lead us into Stage 2, a 165-kilometer hill stage that, again, looks great for us, but we know Quinn Simmons is in good form and we're going to have to fight him off for this stage win. Also, Mathieu van der Poel seems in decent form. Vlasov was leading the line last stage, so it's going to be a battle, but I think we can maybe try and fight for this one if our stamina decides to hold up. And we are here with 14k left to go. The uh, breakaway of two riders is still 53 seconds ahead, but we are, are quickly, I should say, coming to the last climb before the I'm gonna call it an uphill sprint because it's not really a hill it it looks like it flattens up towards the uh, top of the climb so we're gonna try and push the pace down here and then also try and just keep the pace up to the line is right now Pierre Latour who is also seemingly in great form is making an attack as well but Filippo Zana is eating the wind for us, so we are in a great spot as Mathieu van der Poel looks to also try and make a move, but we are not letting that happen just yet as we come down this descent. Filippo Zana looks like he is just about out of energy, and it's going to be all on us starting from now, apparently. That's a little further out than I would have liked, but maybe we do have a tiny little downhill section right here, so... We're going to look to pop our energy gel soon. 5k left to go. Mathieu van der Poel is making a move. We're not going to respond with an attack just yet as our stamina still not in a great spot. And he seems to be in otherworldly form as Mikolanda also making a move quite early. We're going to set our pace up to 92 now. Looks like that should be able to pull back Mathieu van der Poel, but maybe not as our red bar is running out very quickly and we're gonna push on with 92 but it looks like Matthew van der Poel is just gonna stay away but Quinn Simmons out of nowhere comes through like a rocket van der Poel tries to kick but it's it it is gonna be Matthew van der Poel Quinn Simmons in second that's the second time this episode where that result has 
looked a little fishy. It looked to me like Quinn Simmons came across the line in first, but regardless of all that, we will come across in sixth place, which is great for our GC hopes, if there are any of those. And then we will skip ahead after the two flat stages. One was a time trial. We are down to 36th place. We are six minutes behind. But uh, I think stage hunting is definitely going to be our best course of action here. As we have a 187.7 kilometer hill stage today with a nice downhill before the end. And hopefully this stage will get a chance to actually attack or do something rather than just hang with the group. It looks like that final big climb is just far enough away to where we can look to make an attack. We should have some stamina left and see if we can get this stage win. And with 18k left we are at the bottom of the last categorized climb, the Côte de Thézé. As Quinn Simmons decides he wants to put in a dig, we're gonna move ourselves up to 92 to see if we can keep a little bit of pace. We don't want to let him get away, but we don't want to burn out too early. This little climb is not our end goal, Pale Bilbao eating the wind for us, as we do manage to come around. Novak gonna take his turn up at the front, but our stamina in a great spot for the time being as it's Vanderpool looking to come around. We're not gonna let him do that either. Simmons just sitting on our wheel waiting for us to make a move, but if you're Wanting us to make a move right now, you're going to be sorely disappointed as Pale Bill Bow is just about done leading us up this hill. There is a group of seven now with a 47 second gap, and we're going to go ahead and set it to 92 to get over this last little bump before the flat section. Pale Bill Bow doing his best. I mean, he's doing a great job. We're going to. No, I pressed the wrong button. So, Peho Bilbao is off the back now, and we do not have a ton of our red bar left. We're going to slow it down and see if we can attack over this last little hill and maybe get some separation from Alexander Vlasov, Primoz Roglic, and Quinn Simmons. But here we go. We're coming to the bottom of that little climb right now. If we can get over it in first place. I like our chances of a win, but it looks like everybody is up for it today, so we're just going to have to set it to 92, not put in a dig quite yet, and hope our acrobatic descent can lead us to victory. As there are 6k left, and it's mostly downhill, so I'm going to pop that energy gel early and set off on our acrobatic descent. It's going to be hard for them to keep up with us here but we have the red bar to go almost all the way to the line there's not a gap just yet now it opens up there's four six nine seconds and our energy gel pops and with 1.3 we're going to go ahead and start our sprint we still have a little gap but it looks like it's getting closed very quickly and it's going to be Matthew Vanderpool he just can't stop winning stages that just steals it on the line as we come across the line in second place. A devastating result for us here in stage five. And after that stage, we do manage to get enough XP to level up. So level 20, and we get a skill point. And as you can see, our next level up, we will get to improve ourselves for what should be the last time. So level 22 is going to be a huge mark in our career. And we got to make sure our training's up to snuff or else we'll be stuck improving our puncher stat for no reason. And with our skill point that we've earned, we're going to go ahead and put it into network just for the sheer fact to complete the personality tree and get that achievement right there, personality branch. So no real thought behind it besides that. And after that, we went ahead and skipped past the giant mountain stages to get to the final stage of the Dauphiné, stage 8, a 162.5 kilometer medium mountain stage. But as you can see, there is a very long descent there that we can try to take advantage of if we can get over the mountains with whoever's in the lead. We are so far back now that 
an early breakaway is a definite option. It's just going to be on if we have the legs or not. And at the start of the day, we have been appointed as our team's Barador, so as soon as an attack tries to come around us, we are going to match it and get into the break for the day and try and stay away. But, I mean, I guess it is doable. Lopez, Castillo, Huiz, Ferron. It looks like a pretty strong group trying to get away, so possibly could stay away till the end. I'm just really interested to see what our stamina looks like once we hit the big mountains. And we are here at the bottom of the Col de Port, the last climb of the day. With 24k left, we are left with Pavel Sivakov and Nans Peters. And our stamina in a pretty decent spot with only 6.5k to go to the top of this climb. As we're going to have to pace ourselves at about 70, which is what we paced ourselves on the last hill. And it didn't seem like either one of these guys were too anxious to jump in front of us but that peloton only two minutes behind and it looks like they're closing us down fast but they still haven't hit the bottom of this climb I believe uh, they have to be getting close but based on the stamina Peo Babao, Filippo Zana they look like they're in trouble so as long as we can make it to this top of this last climb and get over in one piece we should be fine but 72 just isn't going to cut it so it looks like we are leading out Pavel Sivakov and Nans Peters. But our stamina looking a little poor, so we're going to have to pop our energy gel way earlier than we would like to. Only 3k to go to the top, and 30 seconds behind is the peloton there, catching us as we speak, as we all move over to the right, or to the left. But no, it just looks like a small group of riders, including Quinn Simmons here, have caught us but that's gonna spell an end to our stage win hopes as these guys look super fresh and we are just about cracked with 1k to go to the top of the cold to port we have officially cracked and now we are working for Peo Bilbao in whatever capacity we can but it looks like Pidcock's gonna get over in first so I assume he's gonna go on to win the stage with his down hill abilities and unfortunately as soon as we popped our acrobatic descent we have fallen with 14k to go I thought there was a chance we could catch back up at that point we were only about 50 seconds behind we were in that group with Zana and Novak but we're not going to be afraid we're going to get right back on that acrobatic descent and see if we can catch up before the last little climb but I highly doubt it now after that fall and unfortunately I had a little recording failure there at the end but nothing crazy we had another fall came across the line in 25th place and we ended up finishing where were we 41st in the Dauphiné with no stage win no jersey so overall a complete failure at the Dauphiné this year but that will take us to the final race of the episode the Czech National Championships where, as we know by now, our only chance is to hop in the breakaway and hope we don't get chased down. And that's exactly what we're going to look to try and do today, although even if we do get in the breakaway with the way the stage is laid out, we would not be considered a lock to win it. And unfortunately, we were not able to get into the breakaway today. They just kept chasing us down, but more importantly, ATT Investments was not able to get in so there will be at least one team willing to try and pull them back which means we might still have a shot here and we are here with 14 and a half K left and it might be a case of too little too late for ATT investments as the leading group still has about two minutes we are getting ready to try and make our move as well and we might be a little too far away for the time being as Lucas looks to pull them back but I mean we are closing in very rapidly and since our energy gel has already been popped we're gonna go ahead and make a little dig as we get blocked off of course that has to happen as we use our acceleration to bridge the gap 
looks like we have a 23 20 second gap to the group behind we're gonna pace right past these guys as we have a ton of our yellow bar left it's Jan Barta the only one that can hang with us right now but both of us looking like we are in not great shape as we come over the top of this final climb and we're gonna try and keep away Vacek and Kopetsky but I mean, I do not see that happening right now, but I mean, we are managing to keep our gap at about 27 seconds. Jan Barta deciding not to try and keep up with our pace. So maybe if we have timed this just right, we do have a gap back to Jan Barta right now. If we can get over this, gain a little bit more stamina on the downhill, we might be able to make a little kick because right now we are 30 seconds ahead of the rest of the group and we are able to keep this pace as that gap just continues to grow it's not going down at all and it looks like we're gonna go ahead and become the three-time national champion of the Czech Republic that was completely unexpected but we timed that pretty perfectly thank you to Israel Premertek and Team DSM for chasing down that early break as Matthias Kapetsky and Pavel Bittner come in second and third. But great to be back in the national colors once again. And there you can see us on the podium ending up with a 41 second gap over the rest of the field. I guess it shouldn't be a surprise the Czech Republic doesn't have the strongest riders in the world. And I guess I'm just not used to being this world class yet. But that will bring to an end this episode of our pro cyclist mode great to end on a high note but you can already see on our planner what is going to be in the next episode our first ever tour de france and we are really looking forward to it if we take a look at the uh, profiles there's some nice hilly stages early in the race before our recovery stat can kind of take us out of the running so we're gonna try and get our first tour de france stage win and we're going to have the opportunity to do so. But I wanted to say thank you for all of your support on the series. It means the world. And if you enjoyed the content, please feel free to subscribe or leave a like. I try to put out one episode of this every week, two if time allows, and one episode of our Team Sky career mode every weekend. But for now, just wanted to say thank you, and I'll see you later.